so they're saying this thing's froze up so let's go take a look before we go talk to them and it doesn't look froze up to me now oh, kind of interesting it's right after the suction dryer it's kind of interesting missing some screws well let's go in and see what's going on looks like they pulled the disconnect box there all right so they turned it off and looking inside there we have ice so something's causing this thing to freeze up so we just need to find out what's going on we're going to turn it back on and go uh See if we can put in defrost. This probably has heaters on it because it's in here with like the beer cooler area. So sometimes these have it because they uh, run them a little cold, but that's frosted up into the point where it's almost ice. Got the fans running, so we know they're all working. Definitely got some volume in here. Let's go ahead, just take a peek in there. Everything's non fused. Kick that on. Let's get this thing open and see what we can find out. That's not good. This is not a heated off defrost. Heat off defrost. So looky here. We are right where you would figure it would uh, go into defrost. So let's take a look at the side glass while we're at it. it looks like it's full. I hate dinking with this clock here and then have it not act up afterwards, so I have a very strong feeling that our issue is with this clock. I started this sucker up back December 23rd of 14. I had only been here for 9, 10, 11, 12, four months I'd been here. And look at that, I wrote 19 pounds, 10 ounces in there and what refrigerant it is. I can't tell if that's my writing or not. All right, so we've got 239 volts on line to no end. 206 volts to neutral there, or in, I should say. And 207 coming out. It has tracked a little bit. If you look at it, it did move. Uh-oh, look at that. It did not click. You see that? <laughs> oh, there, there it's ready to do it. Let's see whether it pumps down or not. It's having a fit. That's why I don't use this thing very often anymore. Let's go ahead and get this cover off. Oh, finally shuts off. Go figure. All right, it kicked on for a moment. The pressure must have got up high enough for it to come on. So we've got the tools setting in there to keep them dry for a little bit. And pressure's holding. Let's go inside and take a look, see what the uh, fans are doing. That looks like that's a little bit new also. Not sure what the story is on that. All right, so it's still running. Everything's still running. All right, so basically got one inside spot done. We got all of those to do yet. This is the fun part. So, <clears throat> if you take a look in there, you can see all the dirt right there. All kinds of dirt. So I would say the airflow is probably restricted from all the dirt. When you look at how thick this ice is, this did not happen in one or two days. This has gone on for quite a long time and nobody's noticed it. So I've had a heck of a time getting the water to drain. I've drilled a little hole in the top of my pipe there to try to get a little bit more air through there with it. I flushed down below. So we're basically just shooting it really slowly into the top and letting it fall down. But you can see all kinds of... You can see the hair. 
and stuff. That's that's the problem right there. You can see how matted it is. That's the reason why it froze up between that and probably the defrost clock, which I think I'm gonna change anyway. You can see the coil is really, really matted. I mean, it's really dark up there on top. You can see it all through in here. So, yeah. I'm basically shooting straight down super, super slow, starting to melt this off and then shoving them into the drain pan the way it can melt. Uh, I'm gonna brush this thing when I get done. I'm trying to get most of it with water, but honestly, I can't spray the water hard enough to actually wash it down thanks to all the stuff that's in here that I have to be careful of not getting wet. Well, while we got them out here, might as well wash these out. They look kind of dirty, so. Try to get most of it off of them and then uh, we'll get the other side. So we got to clean off some of the blades. How does this work coming off this drain? What's that wire? Yeah. That's so it don't freeze up. Is that what it is? Yeah, like it's, a heat, for, it's heat, like tape. A heat tape. Thing? Yep, right through the middle of it. Okay. Yep, just, yeah. I thought maybe somebody stuck in nope, it. Nope, 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 it's supposed to be there. This one don't have it, because this one don't run as cold as the other one does. But that's the kind of crap that was on the coil. That didn't help it none, so. Oh, no, hell no. All right, so they're all running. That's always a good thing. These uh, look like they had the electronic control motors in them. They look like the traditional one, but you can kind of just tell they're a little bit different. So we've got the coils cleaned on the back. We got a lot of crud out of the drain. Everything looks a lot better than what it did. I'm gonna go out there and double check that uh, clock a little bit better too. I, uh, I have a feeling we just need to change it because I mean, yeah, this uh, definitely was restricted for airflow, but I don't believe that was the only thing and it accumulated quite a bit. The defrost are definitely gonna be longer than the 40 minutes they had it at. We're gonna take it up to 55 uh, four times per period. You've got it here with the beer cooler, which runs a lot colder, which ain't running it near as cold as what it was running earlier. Not the best adjustment I've ever seen. I don't know why they put these big heads in there. They don't freaking fit nothing. It's the biggest problem with this HVAC one. None of the heads are small enough to really fit it. Let's see how that does. Yeah, that'll give us a couple pounds up above zero. Now we shouldn't get the short cycling because you can see it's starting to come up just a bit. You'll have more of an issue with that when it uh, gets warmer out. But that's a pretty good sized line set that we got there and the solenoid being back here just compounds the issues. Let's see where it comes on at because we got to compensate for cold weather here. So let's see where we're at. Such a tedious thing. That clock is really hard to turn. All right, so we got this looped a little bit better. They're spaced out. But, uh, no vibration now. We got this coming on about 23, 24 pounds. You know, it can get down to negative 10 sometimes here, sometimes a little colder, but just really depends. <laughs> this is running on 404, but once we get that done, we're going to test out this clock and touch. Yeah, that's a little... I just can't win. I don't like this control very well. Kind of... Kind of seems to be a pain in the butt. One little turn, and it goes almost down to a negative. 
little tenth of a turn and it goes the other way. There it goes back on. Yeah, I can feel some binding in this thing. So we're gonna replace that clock. I'm not too thrilled with it. I just because the coil is a little dirty, I don't believe that was the uh, only real reason why that thing froze up. And there's really not a whole lot else that would have caused it other than maybe a TXV that's starving the coil or something, but not to the point where that's at. There we go. That's about two pounds, three pounds. I'm happy with that. It seems to be holding there. Uh-oh, there's my kid. All right, so even though I tested it, I didn't get a very good connection, so I found out uh, this wire is live all the time, even when the outside unit's off. So that was the uh, that was what I was trying to get at when I wrote that there. So uh, clock turns so much easier now, and everything's working a lot easier than what it was. All right, guys, that's going to wrap this video up. I went back a few weeks after doing this video and checked the evaporator coil to make sure it wasn't starting to freeze up and it was not, which is good. I had a funny feeling when the clock was a little hard to turn and I had some weird clicks here and there, like it didn't want to engage and disengage the way it should. I think all those things combined possibly with the pressure switch maybe being out of whack uh, didn't help things at all. Uh, surely the dirty coil didn't help. I know I mentioned in there that the coil might have been a good cause of it, but I've seen ones a whole lot worse than that not cause that kind of ice on the uh, coil. So uh, as always, just go through and do all the preliminaries as far as making sure the coils are clean, you got proper airflow, that your defrost clock's working properly, and that you know everything's working as it should. Uh, I did flush out the drain after I got a lot of that garbage off the coil. Uh, that would have been the next issue, would have been plug drain pan. So it took a lot of flushing to get all that stuff out, as you noticed on the concrete and the drive through. Um, basically, those drive throughs are where a car can pull in and uh, pick up whatever it is they want to pick up, whether it be a pizza, drinks, whatever the case. I guess they're more common than they are in some other states. Uh, don't know exactly why that's the case. I just heard that from other people. I don't know if it's true or not, uh, but they're pretty common around here. So I don't know if it has something to do with alcohol laws or whatever the case, uh, but yeah, whatever. So other than that, if you guys like the video and you wanna see more like it, you know what to do. I'd like to remind you on Sunday evenings at 8.30, Eastern Standard Time, me and Laura have been coming on and uh, going over videos and having guests on and just kind of hang out time with my viewers. So if you would like to join us in the evening for that, we'd love to see you there. So for this video here, we are done. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.